Hi, I'm Todd with QRS Music Technologies. I'm going to show you how to do a MIDI upgrade kit. Uh, we have actually uh, taken apart a piano disc opus system from probably 2002 and take, taken all the chords and everything else off of it. And what you're going to need is an 83529 MIDI upgrade kit from QRS. And then what we're doing, we come over here. So we have to find a place for the processor and the MIDI cord is going to plug into the MIDI in on the rail. This could be a Yamaha Disclavier. Most of the Yamaha Disclavier MIDIs are on the boxes on the front or on the carousel. So you have to kind of keep those. Piano discs, we don't have to keep any boxes or any digital grand pianos or anything like that. QRS, no boxes kept. So when we do a MIDI upgrade kit, I'm going to find a place for the speaker and a place for the processor. And a great place for the processor usually is down here or on the inside beam, so it's nice and neat. Close to the power supply, close to the MIDI, less evasive, basically, uh, all the chords and everything else. Look at just the power chords from the old piano disc that I just took off, and there's like six different boxes I took off. So now this is gonna be a super clean installation, and uh, We'll do one step at a time. Now we have a bunch of chords with this because this can be added to a lot of different uh, pianos. We have a six pin flat ribbon cable that goes with the PLX box. This little box is what goes on the front of the piano. If somebody doesn't want to see that on the front, which is barely recognizable, then you can put it anywhere you want, but then you won't be able to push the button for stop and start if you don't have your iPhone or any kind of Wi-Fi enabled device. And if you have to do music from MIDI, any music will play any MIDI file if you plug a USB drive in the front. So that's why we want this in the front of the piano. And you'll see that when we install it. Speaker cables we include, okay. Uh, extra cables, if you're doing with piano scan, you're gonna need cables for headphones and microphone. So we include those, and you're probably not gonna use them if you're not doing piano scan. Uh, USB to mini USB. This is definitely you're going to use this with the PLX cable on the PLX always. If you're using a computer with piano scan again, you're going to use the, the USB home, but if you're not, you don't need it because it's to hook a computer up. Then we have a couple little just Velcro and some, you know, zip ties. That's the whole MIDI upgrade kit. Now we're going to put the dog bone on. For the processor so we can start this process. I'm going to take those two little tiny screws and the magnet, which we call the dog bone, and we're going to place it where we think this processor should be. And I really believe that this is a great spot for the processor so we can use the power, use the MIDI right here with not a lot of cords going and a lot of mess. The processor can be flat mounted on the dog bone or it can be vertical like that. I'd rather, rather have vertical myself. You're going to need a screw gun and a zip tie cutter is all you're going to need for installing a MIDI upgrade kit or any upgrade kit for that matter. It literally should only take you 15 minutes to install an upgrade kit. It's gonna take you five to 10 minutes to take all the other sundry items off the piano. Boxes, cords, stuff we don't, do not need. And I'm gonna put these Velcros back in. And then I'm gonna put these antennas up like that and I'm gonna stick the processor there. So now, boom, we're ready to just wire it up. So again, in the MIDI upgrade kit, we have to power that processor up. So the power, we're gonna put back here with the power supply. I'm gonna put a uh, three-way power cable. So I'm gonna run the power back to the processor, which plugs in here on the side of the processor. So that's plugged in. Now I'm gonna find the best place to probably run this cable with the older power cable that's going to the rail so that, again, we have minimum cords running around speaker wire. We're going to have to have a speaker. Most pianos that you're upgrading already have a speaker, so you're just going to take that speaker and we include barrels 
if you want to keep the old speaker cable, but I would replace the speaker cable. You have a 1 8 inch side and an RCA side. Again, we're going to more than likely mount the speaker probably right here. Um, this mason has a lot of beams and stuff, so I'll probably put the speaker right here, okay? And this cable will go up the inside of the beam to the speaker, so again, we don't want to see any cables. And this goes plugged into number three on the processor. We include um, a Y adapter for the old type speakers. And on this piano, we actually are going to put a new speaker on, so I won't be using this because I need a 1 8 to a 1 8. But for all the other people that are doing upgrade kits, you have older speakers, you're going to have to have this Y adapter plugged in the RCA on the speaker. You only need one MIDI cable. We, we, have, we send two, but you only need one. Two is for if you have a record strip on the piano already, you can use old record strips or new record strips. In this, we want to go the MIDI in of the rail, which is right here, to the MIDI out, and we mark it with a red dot here on the processor. Okay. Now again, these cords, I'm gonna nicely make them look nice and zip tie them back there after we're done plugging everything in. And the only other thing I have to do now is plug in the PLX box, which this one is going on the front. Now the PLX box, that button is the front. So the mini goes plugged in here in the back. And then what I do is I always plug the PLX on first. Now the PLX has a silver side and a blue side. On the PLX, the top is where the brackets are, and that's blue to the sky is what we do. So here's a little slip there for the PLX cable. Don't put it in backwards. It won't hurt anything, but it won't work. Put it in blue to the sky, and you can feel where it goes in and just kind of push it in. I always kind of give it a little extra quarter inch kink there. Now, you want this about a half inch back on the front of the piano, and that's where we're gonna put it. A half inch back so you don't really see it but you know where it is all right so full piano scan installations you have to use all the cables and I was just informed that this piano is gonna have piano scan so we're gonna put the data cable and the two headphone and microphone cables on we're gonna get them over towards the processor where everything's gonna get plugged into so now we have all of our cables, all of our installations done. Speaker, processor, PLX, that's it. The only other thing that we want to do is we're going to get a power cable for the end because now we have power for the processor and power for the piano and power for the speaker. So we, we need a three power outlet. You're going to plug the speaker and the piano into that cable on one side, and then you're gonna plug the power adapter for the PM3 right there. And what I usually would do then is I would take my Velcro, so that's easily taken off or on, but at least it won't fall off. Then, usually on a, a good spot for this is the shelf of the piano, and then what we're gonna do is attach the power cable to the rim using just a clip and a screw so that doesn't pull out. It never moves. Okay, so now we have all the cords done. I zip tied or used my Velcro to put them all together nice and neat. They're not going to hang down. They're not touching anything. They're not going to rattle. I wanted to make sure they're easily, you know, adjusted or taken off if we change some different things. This I strapped down with the QRS Velcro on the dog bone. That's not going anywhere. I put the power cord here with a clip and a screw so you can't pull it out of the wall. You're not going to hurt the power supply. Everything's plugged into that three-way, and this goes into the wall. That's it. Now, most of the time, this is done on your back in the customer's house, but in a store, obviously, we have room here. We tilted the piano up so you can see what we're doing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the piano up, and we'll go from there. Okay, now that we have installed the MIDI upgrade kit, we're going to do the setup. This is the most important part. That it's the easiest part, but you have to know what you're doing, so now you know what you're doing. You're going to go to your iPad, 
or any Wi-Fi enabled device, you're gonna go to settings and we're gonna go to the Wi-Fi because we have to get onto the QRS PNO Wi-Fi. And we're gonna go to QRS PNO3 as a select. It's gonna ask us for a password to QRS PNO. It's QRS Music. Join. So once we get a check mark there, that means we're on our processor. You got a check mark? We're ready to go. Go to the app QRS Piano. If you didn't download it, go to the Google Play Store or go to the Safari and App Store. Download QRS Finder app. I already did, so I'm going to push the Finder app. It's going to find the piano. Now what we have is our screensaver that shows up. So it's gonna flip videos and all that to show you what we have, but realistically, we, ne we need to go and just touch the screen, okay? And on the left here, we have to go to System Setup, Network Settings, Wireless Networks, Connect to Client Wi-Fi, and searching the Wi-Fi's everywhere around us, and we're gonna to go to this Wi-Fi right there. And I'll select connect. Let's take a second. Okay, now that we're connected, it says the piano slot, or whatever Wi-Fi you're connected to. Network, connection. She'll announce it IP for the first address. time. IP address, one, zero, dot, one, Dot one zero dot. We'll splice this part. One seven seven. Now the next step is you're gonna hit your home button at the top corner. We're gonna go system setup, clock setup, clock, and we're gonna go and make sure now that we're on the internet and we're connected to the internet, we want to make sure we're on the eastern Pacific or mountain or wherever time zone you are by selecting the drop down menu. And we're already in Eastern, and then I'm going to push to client time. That uh, enables me to be the exact time the processor logs in. Second, third step, system setup, trial activation. And if you're a dealer, you dealer registrate or a customer, customer registrate. So I'm going to register the store here, okay, and then register and activate. Now, because we're already connected to the network, it already sees us. It it allows all the music to be downloaded here for our dealer trial. So now we can play any music we want for our customers. Touch the home button at the top. You can go to play piano. Before we play piano, the most important part for a MIDI upgrade kit for a Yamaha or Piano Desk or Spirio, you want to hit your home button again. Make sure you're on the first page. System setup. Performance setup. And we're going to go to routing and delay settings and MIDI options, because we're doing MIDI kits. You want to make sure the MIDI out volume control is on. The number one out of 16 channels is lit up, and the apply minimum velocities is on. And then you want to make sure the five pin MIDI out is on. That's the most important part. Now that those are on, we can go to play the piano and see if it works. Go to artists, songs, whatever you want. We'll just go to Adele here and see if she plays the piano. Pick a song. Okay, so that works. It's amazing. Hello. So now, further adjustments that are important are system setup, performance setup, routing and delay, and then MIDI out adjust. This is where you would take your key, start with the uh, fifth key, push start, and this is your minimum velocities that that key will play. You can go to six, seven. You can see where the keys are moving. Okay, so you can't hear it. So I have to bump it up until we can hear it. We want to apply the minimum. Okay, and that on this piano particularly is 10. If I hit this right dash and arrow, it makes all 88 notes number 10 so I can do it faster. So that one's pretty good. And you do this all the way up the scale 
And if it doesn't play, you bump it up a little bit. And you only want it three above where it, where it doesn't play to where it plays. If I push the dash and arrow on the numbers, you can go through and say, oh, okay, a couple of these notes don't play. So I just go attack those, like right there, from E above, and I'll go turn those up. Depending on regulation of the piano and if it's been properly maintained, some pianos need a lot more power to play each key, but we can adjust that. So now testing, you just go to play piano. So the first page, system setup, then performance setup, there's test files here. And I always go test files and I test the chromatic velocity 001. And if all the keys play, then I did it correctly. This piano is gonna play really quiet. Now you can spend a lot of time fine tuning everything in here to get it to play perfect. Okay, so this basically the fourth step, we're gonna do master volume curves. People aren't doing master volume curves properly. So you wanna make sure that the speaker and the piano play correctly. When we touch volume over here, those three sliders, we want the audio and the piano sliders always in the middle. This is just for fine tuning for different sounds, different songs, different MP3 or QRS files or different files play differently, volumes. But more than that, we want it in the middle. The top slider is the one you're always gonna use. You're gonna slide it down for low, you're gonna slide it up for really loud, or easily soft play or full expression, very easy. So to get those set properly, we go to Performance setup, master volume curves, then you touch the curve wizard. Everything's in a linear curve, which is fine. You can select many different curves and you can mess with this all day long, but realistically just stay in the default linear curve, hit next, you can see three sliders. Today we're only gonna mess with the first slider, the other two are for piano scan if it has recording on it. So the first slider should be at zero because we already set the minimum velocity. Next, this should be set around 27. And the third one, to, we don't want it to play too loud. We're gonna turn it to 60, okay? Now we're gonna go to the, the solo curve. Again, zero down to 27, 28, and this one to about 60. You can adjust this many different ways I'm just saving you a little time. This one is for the MP3 audio curve. The top slider is the speaker, the bottom slider is the piano alone. So to do this properly, we want the piano to zero and we play the sample and then unmute the piano so we can hear the speaker and the piano as quiet as it's gonna play. So I'm gonna bump that speaker up to where I think it should be sounding. Then I hit next. Now the middle one I do, and I think this middle slider should be around 30, and that speaker should be down to about, you know, from 20, about probably 14 to 20. Next, we're gonna do 60 on the piano, and about 60, about 45 on the speaker. And that's it, so now that's gonna be properly set up and just hit next and get out. Now the whole piano is set up properly where you can say play piano, hit artists, go to any artist that you want and push play and you should have the speaker and the piano evenly distributed where I can hit the volume button. Now this is as soft as it's gonna play. Now if I go to full expression, it's gonna get louder and the speaker will get louder with it. And it should be equal if we did our job right. Now I'll turn it down the middle you can slide that down a little bit. A couple other things we can do is to playback options here. I always put all on there so it doesn't stop after one song. And then also you can EQ the speaker. If you like a little bit more trouble, a little more bass, people do because we're firing the speaker at the ground. So that just gives it a little more oomph. Okay. And that's it. If you have any questions, call us at 1-800-247-6557. Talk to one of the technicians at QRS or myself. We'll be 